envy Michael and Simon with nobody here to contradict them. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of feel like a politician who's on a circuit and he's giving his talk and the opposition party has somebody on the sideline that they call a truth squad. I'm waiting for him to get it wrong. Here's my one person truth squad over here. But anyway, so here is how it happened, according to Frank. Okay? In any event, how many of you all remember the old, not the new, not the upscale Italian restaurant, but the old Capri? Oh. Wasn't that a great place? Kind of comfortable, kind of run down, you know? And it was really, it wasn't exactly a dive, but it was close. That's right. <laughs> you know, and they had that piano bar. You remember the piano bar who played there? Dave Lowe? For over yeah, and, and they would have kind of like a, a makeshift dance floor. Yeah. It was really kind of neat, and friends would be there. It was a comfortable place to go. It was really not unlike the, the uh, bar that Michael mentioned in Wisconsin. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a pickup joint, even though it was here in Indianapolis. But I, you know, thought maybe I'd do some good in a place like that. So I would go in and uh, so on and so forth, and I happened to meet Katrina at this place one evening. And we chatted a bit, and I can recall I asked her to dance, and as it turned out, she said no. There's no dancing. These old guys just want to love. <laughs> I suppose that's true, but I saw her there another night. And guess what? I asked her to dance, and this time, she also said no. <laughs> so the third time, I figured it was a charm, and this happened to be on a Friday night, the night before Valentine's Day. So I figured, you know what? The, the, uh, the, the gods are with me tonight because she's certainly not going to turn me down. But lo and behold, I was so slow in the uptake before I got to her, a good friend of mine asked her to dance, and there they were dancing. Wow. Uh, and being very, having a fragile self-esteem, I left. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I left. And you know, I told myself at the time, I'll never forget this, that you know what, if, we're, if I'm ever to get together with this woman, the universe will have to bring us together because I am not going back into this smoky place, and it was heavy smoke all over the place, again to hustle her. <laughs> so I went home satisfied with myself that I have, I'm now moving on from that pursuit. So the next morning, I was with my son Jeff, who's in the audience here, and Jason, my other son. We were at IHOP in Castleton, where we went every Saturday morning to have breakfast. So there we were, minding our own business, having a great time, and I look up, and guess who walks in the door? <laughs> yep, she walks in. And I'm thinking, my God, things are looking up. <laughs> so after we, have, after we eat and everything, and, and my son's leaving, I said, you know what, I'm just gonna stay here, Jeff and Jason, and, and uh, so on, just, just, and so I did, I went over to, the table where she was, and she had a table, she had a paper spread out, and said there was no room for me to sit. So I went over there and I said, hi. And she looks up over her, her glasses and said, yes. <laughs> I really felt like, oh, this is a big mistake. I should have stayed, but in any event, we started talking and this, that, and the other, and maybe for about an hour. And finally, I confided in her. I said, you know, last night after I left, I told myself, if we're ever gonna to get together again, the universe will have to do it because I am not making any more effort. It's the universe. And- So I thought to myself, does he need to think the universe made this happen, or should I? And I finally thought, screw it. And I said, Frank, the universe didn't have anything to do with this. My friend told me that you come here every Saturday <laughs> so smooth, <laughs> and I was entrapped. <laughs> In any event, that is the story of how we met and got together, but now you have to fast forward six years before I got around to proposing. Wow. I mean, I am slow. The original, slow on the uptake. Commit, what do you call me? Commit me? 
he's commitment phobic, but he had some history there that made him a little <laughs> slow. <laughs> what she's saying is that this is my fifth time and I finally got it right. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I have to compliment, you know, people like Michael and Simon and, and, and David and Shannon that you're going to hear from, that they were able to get it right the first time out. Yeah. And that is marvelous. I take off my hat to you. But, you know, some of us are slow, but finally we do. So anyway, what we did, we went back to that Capri, but it was now the Capri Italian place, and it was on Valentine's night. Six and days. you want to tell them what happened? Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll tell them something you did, don't expect me to tell them. Oh. <laughs> About this time seven years ago, we had breakfast one morning, and I said, remember a friend of ours? who was with someone for seven years, and he went off on to a convention or whatever and met someone, fell in love, and came home and told her your history, basically. And I said to Frank, it's been six, and I won't be here seven. Oh. <laughs> and, She's a motivator. And, and, <laughs> and two weeks later, I didn't see it coming on Valentine's Day when we were sitting in the having dinner. I mean, you would think most people would get it. You go back to the place you met seven, six years later, and he proposed, and uh -huh. I said yes. <laughs> and in fact, in this Valentine's Day night, we are going back to the Capri with a couple <laughs> of couples we know to kind of celebrate. That'll be part of our celebration. In addition to that, another part of our Valentine celebration is going to the cabaret on Friday night. Yeah, yeah to listen to Shannon, who's here tonight, sing. And if you haven't heard her... Thanks for the plug, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I calls him the way I see him. In any event, so that was our relationship. So anyway, we ended up getting married, and we chose to get married in Las Vegas. You know, we both had been through this before, so there was no need to do that. You know, we just didn't want to have a big to-do or anything, so we did that, and we, we boarded a Southwestern flight and you've been on the Southwest, you know it's kind of fun anyway. And the guy sitting next to us, who had extracted information from us, we had no idea he was going to tell the, uh, the flight attendant about this. So the flight attendant gets on and makes an announcement to the rest of the plane that we're a couple going to get married in Las Vegas. But it was okay because they gave us a bottle of champagne. So if you can take a Southwest flight, that's another plug. That's a good deal. So then we get to Vegas. And we're in line to get our marriage license, to get married that evening. And, the, and it's a long line. If you've ever been to City Hall there, it goes all the way around the block. The only line that's longer there is the divorce line. <laughs> Which happens to be the second major business in Las Vegas, divorces. And then marriage is number three. In any event, so we're in line, and there are, there, there's a... Uh, a container there with a bunch of little pencils in it, you know, that, that do not have any erasers, and they're these little short pencils like you have on a golf course when you're keeping score. Well, that's what you use to fill out your marriage application in Vegas. So we're in line to do that, and the guy in back of, the woman in back of us uh, starts a conversation, and she says, uh, you know, how long have you known one another? And I said, well, we've been dating for six years. And she said, that's quite a while. And I said, yeah, it is. And I said, how long have you all known one another? She said, we met last night. <laughs> and then I said, is it, isn't that rather sudden? She said, no. She said, it was actually love at first sight. And I look at him, and he's got bloodshot eyes. He looks like he hasn't really recuperated from the night before. So anyway, we stopped that conversation. And then the people in front of us start a conversation. And it turns out he's from Baltimore. And so we talk about how we took a little trip there and we loved Baltimore with the, the inner bay and everything there and with this favorite place called Philippi's that has wonderful crab cakes. And he said, oh, that's my favorite place. So we have a nice conversation. And he says, where are you from? And so we're from Indianapolis. He stops the conversation, turns around, and ignores us for the next 10 minutes. So I tap him on the shoulder. I said, What's the problem? And he says, you're from Indianapolis. I said, yeah, well, so what? He said, you people stole the coats. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you was like nine years ago. <laughs> Some people never get over it.
But anyway, so that happened. So, so finally we get up there and we get the license and so we're, we're traveling the strip. And along the strip there are a number of wedding chapels. You know, some of them advertise Elvis is there. So I, so I turned to Katrina I said, how would you like to be married by Elvis? And Katrina says, if Elvis is going to be there, I'm going to marry Elvis. <laughs> So I decided that wasn't too good of an idea. So we show up at, I don't 